You've probably heard the buzz about the room temperature superconductor called LK99. But what if you could make this room temperature superconductor in your garage? I'll tell you how today in this episode of DIY Biotech. You've probably seen demonstrations of superconductors before where you dunk a material into liquid nitrogen and see that it floats above a strong magnet. But just imagine that same demonstration at room temperature. So basically there are two main interesting properties of superconductors. One, they superconduct. There's zero resistivity within the material. So if you run a current through a superconductor while it's superconducting, then the current will pass through with no resistance and the material won't heat up like traditional wires do. The second property is magnetic expulsion, and that explains the levitation that occurs when a superconductor is close to a magnetic field. We already use superconductors in things like MRIs and particle accelerators, but again, most superconductors, we have to have at extremely low temperatures, like 10 degrees Kelvin, so 10 degrees above absolute zero. It's the middle of the summer here in Southern California and it's already expensive enough just to keep this house, you know, 20 degrees Fahrenheit below ambient temperature. Imagine trying to keep a machine 10 degrees above absolute zero. It's incredibly expensive. So with this discovery of LK99 out of South Korea, Perhaps we can do all of these processes that we've been doing at low temperatures now at room temperature and save all of that energy. Not only would room temperature superconductors be revolutionary for MRIs and particle accelerators, bringing down the cost of MRIs and doing science with particle accelerators, but it could also be revolutionary for transportation and power production industries. So how did the researchers actually make this material? It must be really difficult, right? Well, no, not really. You can make this material in your garage with relatively affordable equipment and at least pretty non-toxic materials. So super easy to make is relative. It's super easy if you happen to have a vacuum furnace. Really what this video is is a cry for help. If you have a vacuum furnace or if you have access to a vacuum furnace, I highly recommend trying to make this material and trying to validate what the researchers did in South Korea, because right now there's a lot of controversy if they actually made this material. Not necessarily that they didn't make the material, but that the material has the properties that they say it has. So a vacuum furnace is about five to $20,000 just for a frame of reference. So again, not awful. I'm not going to buy a vacuum furnace just to try this out, but if you have one, definitely try it out and let me know in the comments below. Okay, DIY Biotech is going to be trying some DIY material science, but again, this is pretty straightforward. So this is how to make LK99. First of all, LK99 is a ceramic that's made of lead, copper, and phosphate ions. First, you need to make a mineral called lanarkite, lanarkite. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it looks like this. Kind of scary looking. So to make the linarkite, linarkite, whatever, you need lead oxide and lead sulfate in equal proportions. You heat them in a furnace, not a vacuum furnace, just a regular furnace, at 725 Celsius for 24 hours. Easy enough. Next, you need to make the second ingredient, which is copper phosphate. So you just need to heat copper and phosphorus in molar proportions because you want Cu3P, right? So you need three moles of copper, one mole of phosphorus. In those proportions, in a vacuum furnace at 550 degrees Celsius for 48 hours. By the way, I'm just getting these details from the paper. If you want to see the paper that the South Korean team published, you can look in the description below. So now you have the linarkite and the copper phosphate. You need to mix these together in seemingly unknown proportions and heat them again in a vacuum furnace at 925 degrees Celsius for in the wide range of 5 to 20 hours. And that's it. Apparently, you have a superconductor. 
So let me know in the comments below if you're skeptical of this LK99 superconductor. And be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Personally, I think it would be revolutionary if we could have room temperature superconductors. And if this isn't a real room temperature superconductor, I would be sad. But I think one day we will have it. May not be in our lifetimes, but if it is, it'll be revolutionary. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.